Hey, this video contains spoilers for The Great Hunt, second book in the Wheel of Time series. The TV adaptation will also be mentioned. You have been warned. Ugh, stop calling me queen of ganchos. I know I have fancy clothes on and stuff, but I'm not a queen. My name is Kaya. Kaya Impatience Reads, and I'm just a memer from the two pits. Reminds you of anybody? Yes, I'm looking at you, Rand. <laughs> The Great Hunt is the second book in the Wheel of Time series. What are we hunting? I don't know. Are we actually the prey? Probably. And yes, took me a whole year to get here. But this is the result of the wheels weaving. You can't really fight it. <laughs> this is great. From now on, I'll blame every single thing on the wheel. The wheel led me to speak the words in this video, so if you're not happy with them, don't come after me. We're all set? Let the review commence. Let the salt pour in begin. The book starts and 10 seconds in, I'm already confused. The one who calls himself Bors, which by the way I thought for a good while that the one who calls himself Bors called himself Boris. Like who? So as I was saying, the one who calls himself Bors makes an appearance at some kind of party? The super sketchy type. The host? The dark one himself. The attendees? Dark friends. They apparently all gather once in a while so that Belzeman can give them instructions. <laughs> what is this? Now a certain informant whispered in my ear that the one who calls himself Bors is actually Actually an important mystery character. Yet another person to keep an eye on. Beautiful. Actually, this had me thinking. You know how there are countless characters walking around in this series and pulling at the wheels threads? I'm starting to believe that in reality, there's only a grand total of 10 characters. They just have hundreds of names each. We'll leave the one who calls himself Bors. After which, nothing happens for five chapters. I kid you not, I started profusely sweating because it sounded like I'd have no substance to work with for this review. You. Thankfully, Leandrin and Pat and Fane are here to keep things interesting. Hey, look, it's Suan. Finally got to meet her. First time I saw her was in the show, and um, that that's it. Sorry, that was just a diversion. And a transition. Let's take a look at Rand. Suan just told him he's the Dragon Reborn. He hates it. Because he's not a lord. He's just a shepherd from the two rivers. Fair enough. And I must say, I like this. It is so common for the unaware protagonist to just embrace their secret powers and therefore accept accept the great destiny that goes with it, which is usually the tiny mission of, you know, saving the world. So I think it's very cool that we have Ren denying all of this, going like, hell no, I did not sign up for this, and neither you or your wheel can make me. <laughs> Except, well, let me get to the point. My boy Rand has the tendency of becoming annoying fast and often. Mr. McGrumps hates being able to channel, so he thinks he can just be a butt to everybody. And for the love of the wheel, stop telling Egwene what to do. Oh dear, I really would be part of the Red Aja, right? I should take one of those totally reliable online tests to see where I would end up as a nice eye. Or actually, tell me what you guys think. Would I be a Moraine kind of blue? A part of the men loathing reds? Or maybe among the ever horny greens? I'd probably go with black, just because it looks good on me. Oh, we don't talk about that, Aja. <laughs> Never mind. Rand is not the only butthead around. Matt and Perrin judge him a lot. Because he's the star of the show and now wears fine clothing and people call him Lord, I understand that this is sudden and weird to see your friend become a noble overnight, but is your friendship so fragile that you reject him and blame him for all of this? Dude spends his time telling anybody willing, or unwilling for that matter, to listen that he hates it. Later on, Matt freaks out when Perrin and communicates with wolves, even though that proves to be super useful, since he could track a whole bunch of dark friends. Matt, please shut up. You guys are supposed to be childhood friends. Sounds more like you secretly hate each other. There might be some underlying thing that's causing this. After all, I am aware that there is a lot of subtext that I'm missing because I'm not yet familiar with Jordan's ways of sneaking hints the way I'm kind of used to Sanderson's tricks, which allows me to know where to look. For instance, in the eye of the world, some small events seemed random random to me when it was actually Rand channeling. I had no idea. Anyway, pretty sure I've said it and I'll say it again, the show did a much better job of depicting their friendship. And I'd go as far as saying that it makes a better job with characters in general. I'm still struggling to really like anybody in the book so far. Intermission 1! Pat and Fane. Was he in the eye of the world? If yes, then I did a very good job forgetting about him. It took the show. You book supremacists are gonna hate me, aren't you? For me to go, oh, oh no, he looks 
cocky enough to be suspicious. And sure enough, somebody helps Fane break out of prison and suddenly Egwene and Matt are attacked here. There's a Trolloc script written on the wall and Matt's dagger disappears. Coincidence? <laughs> Definitely not, obviously. Here's something interesting. Fane mentions having been changed by Belzamon, whatever that means, which indicates that perhaps all dark friends were changed somehow, including the one that calls himself Bors. I want to know what it means exactly. Were they corrupted in a magic way that turned them to pawns for the Dark One? Cause yeah, what do you gain from helping the Dark One? Were they injected with some superpowers? Wait, are they mind controlled? Don't answer any of that, just talking to myself. Intermission 2! Egwene, still invested in learning the Aes Sedai way, is busy training at the White Tower. I like Egwene and her enthusiasm, although that might just be because I myself want to know more about the One Power and maybe possess it. But most of Egwene's training is her and the other novices having to wash dishes. Oh girl, same. The wash and dishes part, obviously. Moraine hasn't replied to my application yet. Meanwhile, Nynaeve hates it. By it, I mean all of it. One power lesson. Nynaeve accidentally starts a fire in the tent classroom and she's horrified, both because she's in denial about her channel and abilities and because she hates Moraine so much, she doesn't want to become like her. Where's your wisdom? Wisdom? Somebody in my comments called Nynaeve the book's token tsundere. So there you have it. She's gonna be Tsun Nynaeve for the rest of this video. Intermission over, back to Rand. He and the squad get separated because of portals, stones, and shifting lands? What? Rand, Loyal, and the Sniffer forgot his name on one side. Perrin, Matt, and the Aes Sedai forgot her name on the other. Getting split up. Wonderful idea. Perhaps the sole purpose of it is to lower the collective IQ level because watch what happens as soon as a new character barges in. Wild Selene appears. She's gorgeous and she needs help. For something, I forget, but she needs help. Fret not. Lord Rand already has his eyes on her. Hurry! Catch her while she's troubled enough to be unable to recognize how much of a mess you are, Rand. <laughs> Speaking of, a beautiful damsel in distress showing up out of nowhere after you fell asleep and mysteriously teleported somewhere unknown? Alright, nothing suspicious here. On top of being sketchy as hell, the whole Celine ordeal upsets me. Rand would marry Egwene, but you see, Celine has undeniable qualities. She took him for a lord, much like everybody else, and Rand absolutely hated it up until this point, but shh. She thinks he's brave and, most importantly, she is beautiful. So beautiful he just wants to kiss her already. I'm sorry, aren't you still with Egwene? You sure think a lot about her. And didn't you tell Egwene you loved her, I don't know, last chapter? <laughs> Men, am I right? Bunk! Okay, to be fair, Rand and Egwene are not officially together. Egwene chose the White Tower and Rand is... Uh, a, a lord now, so I'm not even mad. <laughs> Alright, I'm, I'm, I am a little mad. But here's something that makes me feel better. Show Rand and Egwene, big yes, much cute. Book Rand and Egwene, yes, they broken up actually, you're, you're good. Putting aside my shipper problems, Rand is showing the dagger TM to Celine, and that is a real problem. Do not Trust! She seems a bit too interested to my liking, especially about that horn of Valir. Hold on a second. Stop everything! Is Selene a dark friend? Ladies, gentlemen, Ogier, I introduce to you my newest form of disease. Dark friend apprehend. The new hoid paranoid, or should I say, parahoid. <laughs> Enter the Sean Chan. I feel like I don't understand their deal very well, but they're here and they're causing quite the trouble. One thing's for sure, they are acquainted with the Dark Friends since they have business with Fane, and they seem to also be interested in the Horn of Valir, as well as the evil Shad Shad Shadar Shad mm, Shadar Shad Fuck. Ten seconds later. as well as the evil Shadar Logoth dagger. But let's ignore the ant-faced people for now to focus on Bale Doman. Bale Doman who do be a simple traitor. Not gonna ask whether he was around already. If I didn't before, I do see him now. Bale Doman is one of those characters appearing randomly. I'm putting air quotes there because I expect it is anything but random. I'm just confused is all. It's Sanderson's interludes all over again. Who are you and how do you fit in the wheels pattern? I'm gonna need you to state your intentions 
seems very clearly to me. I have not the mind power to speculate right now. But Dolman seems innocent enough. After all, he do be a simple traitor. For this next section, let me take you back to the Rand Circus. Lord Rand is so paranoid at the idea of becoming mad that he makes himself go mad prematurely. Genius. I know I'm giving him a hard time and perhaps I shouldn't. But one, mocking him is fun as hell and two, it's not my fault if he keeps messing up. Look at him losing the dagger. It's gone. Again. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Quick note to say, this book doesn't feel as slow as the first and I haven't felt bored this whole time, but there's some back and forth going on, especially with the horn and that damn dagger. Dark friend steal chest with horn and dagger, we steal from dark friend, dark friend steal again, now we gotta steal from dark friend, again. I know this is just another Monday in this world, but I'm going to need you all, both dark friends and regular friends, to please stay put for more than one second. Wait, I just realized I said, in this world, what is this place called? The Randlands? Oh my god! Rand finally finds his way back to Matt and Perrin. They hug and tell each other how glad they are all of them survived. Just kidding. They keep acting like they were never friends. Especially Matt, whose affliction is getting worse. Okay, I'll give you a free pass this one time. You're sick, after all. Yes, even a reader says that he has something that's broken inside his head. Am I also afflicted with some dagger sickness? I must be surrounded by dark friends, because nobody told me. Wait, does that make my therapist an Aes Sedai? Cool! So, I understand Matt being a butthead. But what about Rand just scowling and repeating all day? I'm not a lord. I'm a shepherd from the two rivers. I strongly advise against making a drinking game out of this. You'll die. Lord Rand, my boy, I know you're proud of your sheep, but try focusing a little more on protecting that apocalypse horn. See? You've lost it again. Intermission 3. <laughs> Intermission 3! Fun fact, in my previous Wheel of Time review, you might have seen me spell Aes Sedai this way, when talking about an individual Aes Sedai. And that's because I thought it was the singular form of Aes Sedai. And the curse of the audiobook goes on as I kept spelling Bale Doman this way for most of the script, until I looked him up and realized Google was very confused, and for a reason. Intermission 4! Making this video had me search a whole bunch of things, which ended up leading me to YouTube, my home, where I found Tom singing. He was just there, don't ask me. This guy has been singing to me about the man who can't forget on repeat for the last hour. He won't stop and why are my eyes leaking? Speaking of Tom, hey, now that's a transition. Tom is back? I'm sorry, but this is mad sus. This must mean one of two things. Either he didn't die last time we thought he did. I don't remember the specifics, but he did die, right? And he's back, which is great. We do be loving Tom around here. Or he died and whoever, whatever this is, is after something important like, I don't know, those precious tokens we're carrying around. Which, speaking of, Lord Rand is very quick to tell Tom about. Could you shut up for a second, Rand? Why don't you make a public announcement at this point? I, Rand Althor, totally not a lord, but instead a simple shepherd from the two rivers, am in position of an evil dagger and a horn that may or may not be important for an event ominously titled The Last Battle. There you go. Now everybody knows. But no, really, even Loyal went, are you sure about that? Listen to the Ogier. And most importantly, as Tsunainif said, Says, Don't be a goose. Loyal says he doesn't understand humans. <laughs> I now identify as an Ogier. <sighs> Welcome back, Tom. Will you sing us a song? Lord Rand and the gang want to take a way gate to go after the horn, but because of the Machinshin threat, they take a portal stone instead. Wow, you are able of common sense I wish this life hack was widespread knowledge because... <laughs> Egwene, Elaine, Min, and Sunainiv leave the White Tower to go find Lord Rand and the others. Thank the light! Yes, please, go get that wool-headed idiot. But here happens the strangest thing. Let me guide you through it. Take your small party of good guys, add Leandrin to the picture, select a way gate, throw in a surprise boss with a sprinkle of bad guys, and there you have it. The perfect recipe for disaster. More seriously, the girls are suddenly attacked by this Rana chick and her soldiers, and she's talking nonsense about Damain. What? I kid you not. <laughs> this was so brutally out of the blue. I thought I accidentally skipped a chapter or two, but no. Holy 
crap. This was a trap set by Leandrin. We were betrayed, we were fooled, and I reacted as if I also were being captured. Wait, hold on. I just had a flashback of show Leandrin literally stalking Sunine Eve. It was crazy. Sunine Eve is on screen. You bet Leandrin is somewhere, right there, trying to pull a little sneaky on her. How many times did I yell at Leandrin through my screen? What do you want? I guess I know now. Gosh, if they're really building up to this. Egwene is the only one that's put on a leash, literally, and she even has a channel and detector to monitor her. The other three make a deal with Domen, who do be a simple traitor, to help them escape as soon as they save Egwene. I now understand why Domen had to be brought here by the Sean Chan. I understand the wheels weave in. By the way, Min had some visions or whatever they're called. I don't remember Tsunai Neve's one. Good job, Kaya. But Elaine's involved in Axe, among other things? When I hear Axe, I think Perrin. Perrin, who hasn't been doing anything this entire book? Okay, he did one thing. As I mentioned earlier, he sniffed some dark friends. Good boy! Perrin, it's okay. I'm sure you'll eventually have your minute of fame. As of now, the many minutes of fame all go to... Lord Rand! It's been a hot minute. <laughs> Let's see, what are you up to? Oh, wow. Mingling with none other than the Dark One. You can tell Belzaman is having fun, because he keeps taunting Rand, or the loose Theron in him. Lord Rand first meets the Dark One. Don't worry, he was not invited to one of those dark friend festivities. This happens in his own dreams. A weird world he's transported to while sleeping. And at some point, he starts reaching for his channeling powers to defend himself if needed be. <laughs> it can come in handy sometimes, don't you think, Lord Rand? Afterward, Belzaman shows up again and plays with Rand's mind. He shows him alternate universes, a hundred lives he could have lived if the wheels weaving were any different. And at the end of each life, the Dark One whispers, I won again. Lose Theron. Ugh, shut up! You're sounding like my sleep paralysis demon. This time, it's the final. <laughs> I hate my brain. No, this is the final and real duel between Rand and the Dark One. This is serious business. And it's hilarious. The Dark One is like, serve me or I'm going to destroy you. <laughs> And Lord Rand just laughs at his face. To be honest, I would have too. So now, conveniently, Rand is no longer in denial. He knows he's the Dragon Reborn. He knows he can win this. And thus, they fight. Land sword fighting technique taught at the beginning of the book comes back to Rand and he uses it. Nice! It went full circle. Circle? Like a wheel! Whoa! Lord Rand wins. For now. Now, don't ask me how Min ended up finding Rand lying on the floor. I forgot, but she did. I don't know what I expected exactly from this scene, but I was flabbergasted. When Min went, I like older men. I have no interest in farms and sheep and shepherds. Ooh, you have such silky hair. Oh my god. Admin to Lord Rand's harem, I guess. Or should I call him Loose Theron Telamon? Teletubby? It's ridiculous, by the way. I get Rand is attractive and he's the dragon now and all that, but come on. What is this? Sword art online? Egwene comes in like, yo, what the f*** you doing with my man? Oh, sweet child. Little do you know. Wait, when did you escape? And how did you escape? I must have zoned out so hard. Is that yet another woman entering the scene? The harem begins! <laughs> Lan Fear is her name, and she's a Forsaken. Huh, just realized I still don't get what a Forsaken is. Hold on, what is she saying? Rand is hers? Um, care to explain? And she's gone. Okay, lady, see ya. I'm sure you'll be back for your turn to stroke Lord Rand's smooth hair. <laughs> Something to ponder. Egwene and Elaine were both drawn to Lord Rand because he was pulling at them. What the hell does that mean? And why not Sunai Neve? The real confusion, though, is the end of this chapter and of the book. Here are my exact notes for this last bit. Check name of the dude at the end of chapter 48. <laughs> The Legion and Captain are dead. I have no idea who these people are. <laughs> and then I wrote down the line, Dark friends have betrayed them. Dark friends like that Perrin from the two rivers. Perrin, remember that minute of fame I promised you? It's coming. I can smell it. The Great Hunt. More like the great never-ending hunt of what again? <laughs> I started in my last review a game about how long it would take me for me to get sick of these shenanigans. It's me against the slow, baby. And I'm winning. Right now, I'd say the second book did a better job than the first at keeping my attention. I wouldn't say it's perfect. Because yeah, not gonna lie. I can't anyway. I said I can't lie. I'm kind of confused about this claim. Book 4 is still my favorite. Uh, very fond of book 2. 
What is there to be fond of? I'm sorry if this is your favorite book of the series or something. I just don't see anything special in it. It does progress the story, as a book does and should. Thank goodness. But there's just lots of running going on, which in the grand scale of the wheels weaving, I doubt as much. Doesn't mean it's a bad book. Honestly, it was good. I do, however, expect the series to become great eventually. Not okay, not good, great. I am already quite generous with my limited amount of patience. Don't let me down. But seeing how it improved with the great hunt since the eye of the world, I have good faith. This is the end of the video, my friends. I have said my piece. It's done. It's over. Feel free to yell at me in the comments if you disagree with my review. Thanks in advance for the engagement. If you want more videos like this, I'm begging you, please, subscribe and leave a like. Share my content with your friends if you feel extra generous. Thank you very much for watching and conchos. Don't forget to keep trusting your Aes Sedai. Except this one. No, here's the thing. I know how to pronounce it. I, I, like, I hear it how people say it, and I know in my mind, because when I try to put it into practice, it just doesn't come out properly. I don't know. No, I just, I, I still can't say. Yeah, see, I tried to say it right now, and it didn't work. <laughs> Manetherin. Ma, neth, er, in. Manetherin. <laughs> Manetherin? Manetherin. Wow, that wasn't so hard. Manetherin. Okay, so the stressed syllable is the n. Manetherin. <laughs> okay, I get it. I will proceed to forget it now, but at least I can say that I got it for like two seconds. <coughs>